Craig, season and a day away. What are your expectations going into this 2023 campaign? It's nice to start with a soft one. Thanks. Uh, expectations are, are obviously improvement from last year. I mean, uh, you know, from a league standpoint, it's hard to maintain over the course of 10 months. We don't know what, what the challenges are going to be. And every team at the end of the season says the same thing. Oh, it's adversity. You talk about the struggles or you talk about how you overcame them. So the, the goal is to be speaking in a, in a positive tone at the end of the year about the adversity we faced and, and how we overcame and, and succeeded. And, uh, succeed, succeeding this year is, is, first of all, getting back into the playoffs and then making a good run and, and making ourselves proud. First few months taking over for Garth Lagerway. How's it gone for you in the GM role? It's a piece of cake. You know, a lot of sleep, not, not, a, lot of, not a lot of stress. Now, it's, it's been really busy, you know, reestablishing – a um, little bit of uh, my leadership skill and, and culture and the way that, that I'd like to do things. We have a lot of great people, so it's, it's been easy in a sense. Uh, but, you know, look, it's, transition is, is, never, is never simple, but it's been a lot of fun. And, and we're heading in a really good direction, a lot of positivity. And, I mean, the, the environment right now, the way these guys are acting, the way the, the staff is getting along is really, really fascinating. One thing that you implemented... One thing I implemented? Yeah, I don't have the whole laundry list, but you said, yeah, one thing that the Craig live, live with Stan we, since you came. We, weekly interaction that's not called a meeting. So being around each other. You know, the last couple of years have been a big challenge culturally in a world pandemic. You know, it, it really caused a lot of separation, physical separation, emotional separation. So just bringing back in the last two and a half, three months, like, let's be around each other. We don't have to talk about soccer all the time. We don't have to problem solve all the time. We, we can just be human, you know, and, and that's a big piece over the last two, three months, you know, really humanizing not only ourselves back to the players, but, you know, really letting everyone be a little bit vulnerable in front of each other, not really a, a, a locker room type idea. Um, and bringing that into play, I think, has been really empowering for a lot of people. What are you, um, what are you expecting from the team, just in terms of tomorrow? I, I expect a lot of energy. I expect a high-paced game from us. You know, I, I really expect this optimism, this this feeling that we have, this performance that we put together at the Club World Cup. Although, you know, losing on a deflection, but the performance overall was quite positive. A good step in the right direction. We created a lot. We really good defensive shape, created some good turnovers, some good moments. Um, and, you know, tomorrow the only difference is we want to see a little bit more venom to go. Uh, one of the off-season changes was in the players' locker room uh, at Starfire, I guess, in terms of, like, you guys rehabbing it and, and whatnot. Did you have any involvement in that? And, and what were your, your thoughts on the importance of, like, a physical refresh? I mean, credit where it's due. My, my involvement in that was to say yes. So, uh, but the design and the way it feels, that was really up to the coaches and the players. You know, when, when we make a decision to make it better for them, we, we want them to make it better, you know? So we listened, we, we figured out what they wanted, and then we just implemented it. And, and to be fair, like, they got it right. And was it important though to have something like a physical reminder that, like, I mean, was it, is it symbolic of sort of like a, a mental refresh? I mean, you know, the psychology of all of this is pretty. I mean, what a what an indefinite and black hole conversation we can get into. But yeah, I mean, visual visual reminders of change are important, especially coming off of last year. Making sure that things feel different, they look different, um, was was really important to us. And so I think we executed it well so far. Now. We'll see how the next couple weeks go because that's where the follow-up questions come. <laughs> so we'll find out. Great, so, Heidi. Just fair to say though, it wasn't just a coincidence that it happened. Even though it's the last year of the facility, that it wasn't that you guys did. Yeah, th there aren't a lot of coincidences when it comes to that stuff. And when we say they were coincidental, um, we're typically making that up. So. <laughs> <laughs> how has the Apple deal affected the league? You think? I don't know. We're going to find out. I, you know, I, I would say personally, I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, I love the, the, the platform. I love the relationship. I love that it's a company where the brand is known worldwide. Uh, and I love that they have the courage to jump into something that so many others hadn't, hadn't thought of yet. Uh, they're nothing short of ambitious in everything they do. So, uh, you know, from, from the player's perspective, from my perspective, I think it's a pretty cool and overwhelming thought that we are now on display for the entire world. And that wasn't the case, you know, four months ago. Does that, I mean, does that provide an opportunity for one of the flag bearers of the league then? 
you guys are just in terms yeah. of yeah I mean we we already considered ourselves a worldwide brand especially being the first to go to the club World Cup from our league this does nothing but but entertain a little bit more of that conversation and I think it empowers us and it empowers our company to uh, to really take advantage of, of a newfound platform a much broader platform to make sure that everyone understands that this place this place is a fortress we need to make it what are your thoughts on the uh, new playoff format with the three game series in the first round as long as we're a part of it, I like it. <laughs> uh, going back to your comments about uh, your, your first few months as general manager, um, this, the sporting director position uh, that you were in, is is, is that filled? Is that, is that something that, that you, you, you want to get filled? Is that a spot? Yeah, we'll bring more people in. I mean, you know, in terms of titles, I, I don't know what anyone will be called, but going through kind of the strengths and weaknesses and the rebalancing of who we have and what we're good at, what we're weak at, um, whatever we are weakest at, that's the position that we'll fill. What we call it, I mean, who knows? <laughs> we'll come up with some fun titles. Speaking of the, the league, though, I mean, you started 29 teams this year. Um, how, how's the player development looking and, and the, the strength of the overall league? Just not you guys, but when the way they had the conferences divided and playing more teams in your conference than the other conference. Uh, yeah. How, how's the competition? You know, Growth is fun. Growth is fun. I mean, I've, you know, I played in this league when there was 12 down to 10 teams. Um, it was a little easier to win championships back then, numerically. But look, growth is awesome. It's it's challenging to maintain level of play, but it's also a lot of fun because more competition's good. I think you know, look, we are we are more relevant than we've ever been. We are we are now spoken about around the world. We are now watched around the world. And this is just one more team that people are going to watch. Uh, we're not hiding from the fact that we're, we're, you know, more popular than we've ever been. We're not hiding from the fact that we're improving the league. I don't think anyone is walking away from that challenge. And so, it's a it's a well well accepted uh, risk that that we take annually to, to be relevant, to maintain relevance, and um, you know, as a league, there's who else in the world is expanding. You know, we're, we're, we're trend-setting right now. We're doing something no one else in the world is doing. In that popularity access for viewers outside of the stadium, yeah. that's been kind of an issue this year, you know, with Apple and, and such, and uh, maybe Roots you know, having some issues moving forward. So what are we looking at for access for the future? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to defer that one back to Hugh and our business side because they're the ones that understand the ins and outs. What I know is I'll be here what, during the game. So I don't really get the choice to, to watch it at home. So, uh, But look, the, the access is the platform that they have, the Apple Pass. I mean, this is, this is really going to change the face of sport and the change of access to the entire league, to the entire program, not only to the first team, to our second team, to our academy teams. I mean, the, the access provided so people can not only get to know our first team, but our reserve players and our youth players and watch development throughout. You're gonna be able to do that at home, which is an insane thought to, uh, to be able to do. You know, usually you have to be on the sideline to watch these players at 15, 16, 17 before you ever get to see them on a screen. So this is, uh, this is a, a big change in the way that people are gonna be able to consume our product and the way they're gonna be able to Really, some of these players endear themselves to our fan base at a much earlier stage in their career. Uh, I anticipate in three, four, five years as more people uh, digest our, our players and our product and our visual that we're going to have players that make a debut that half our stadium already know who they are. So you think that's going to be effective in growing the future and really growing the, the, the sport in the United States I, I think, particularly? I think so. I think, I think growth is about access in, in sport. You know, it's about the emotional bond that we can create. It's about those, those tangible moments we create with fans where they feel something, where they, they have feedback, good, bad feedback. It's all welcome. And, uh, and the earlier we can get people watching our players and the earlier we can, we can create these relationships between our player and fan base, that only empowers us as a club as well. What are your expectations and thoughts for uh, Wade's Tacoma team this year? I think we're going to be good. You know, we were very competitive last year, obviously uh, went deep in the playoffs. Uh, our goal is to not only develop players but create a winning environment. You know, when we talk about the defiance, we talk about creating players that know how to win that know how to transition into this group and continue a winning mentality. 
humility is a big part of that. And Wade and his staff are so good at creating a, a really daily competitive, challenging environment. I anticipate being very competitive again. And um, be, I'd be lying if I said we we want to win it. You know, we 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 want to create championships at every level for our for our group. What are the expectations for League's Cup? It's, an, it's a new format. Uh, yeah. The league's going to have a month break in the summer. But also, you know, what's the expectation as a club? And also, how uh, difficult is planning ahead of this year that's so different? Well, planning for something you've never done is exciting and impossible. Uh, so, so we have no idea what to expect. We don't know how many games it'll add. We don't know how competitive uh, we can be in that because we're not there. But whenever you match MLS against League MLK, you're going to get fireworks. And um, we aren't a club that tends to approach any competition without a bit of pride. So I, I anticipate some fireworks coming from us as well. We, you know, we're so far away from it, but it is so close at the same time that you know, we've already had a few conversations. But in the first couple weeks of the season, we're trying to limit ourselves to, to focus on week to week right now. Given what's coming up World Cup down the road, how important is that competition and the fireworks between that, the two leagues, the growth for this region? How important is that? I mean, look, it, it, exposure is, is what this what sports is, right? It's it's creating moments where people can connect to it. And I think I think this is another opportunity for fans to connect to a really high level of competition. I think the World Cup is the pinnacle of that competition and competitive standpoint from football and soccer is, you know, we're gonna we're gonna create another atmosphere, another platform, another environment, another opportunity for more fans to connect not only with what what we are doing, but with what our neighbors to the south are doing. And we're all hosting the next World Cup together. So it's a pretty cool platform to introduce. How would you assess the developmental process of some of your young guys this year? Yeah, the, the progress that some of the young guys have made this year and where you're planning on, are, are a lot, most of them planning to go to Defiance or is there still some outward loans you might be doing? The, most loans, because of the way our calendar works, our competitive calendar being on a calendar year versus a lot of the world being on the summer to summer calendar, most of the loans I would anticipate having in the summer when, when teams are planning because we want to put players in the right position if we're going to loan them to develop. To develop, they need to play or they're already playing for us. So, uh, and the only thing I'll ask you guys to catch me on is, uh, is is calling developing players young players because they're not always young. Uh, 16 is not the same as 20, not the same as 2022, 20, but experience is, is what we're talking about, right? So we're talking about developing professionals. And so regardless of age, you know, we might loan some players out. You're going to see a lot of guys playing with Defiance. Uh, as long as we're healthy, this is a heck of a talented group behind me. And so it's it's a darn hard uh, challenge to get some minutes. And for some of our developing guys, you know, they're going to need some good fortune in front of them, some tired legs in order to get those opportunities with the first team. So you're going to see them with Defiance. And when they perform there, they're going to get rewarded.